Okay, so I went to grammar school and had a brilliant education for which I am immensely grateful. I live in Kent, which still has grammar schools. It's one of, I think, two counties um, that still has selective education, the 11 plus. I have two sons, one who failed his 11 plus and has had the most fantastic glittering career since, mm -hmm. uh, and one who um, passed, went to grammar school absolutely ghastly and only sort of, you know, came to grips with life later on in his life. I've also seen the pain and misery of children who are basically told they're failures at 11. The problem is that there aren't enough grammar schools. Now, I know that, the, you know, obviously you'd, you can't put everybody in a grammar school because that kills the whole point of selective education. But just to give you an example, because the um, the... the subscription rate, they're desperately, desperately oversubscribed. So the parents that can afford or have the wherewithal to help with tutoring and all the rest of it to make sure their kids pass the 11 plus and get into grammar schools, that's fine and good for them. But the kids who don't get into grammar school have got so little choice. They've got one secondary school. And if you think into the old days, and Peter will remember this, you know, there were grammar schools, there were secondary modern schools, there were technical schools. So there was actually a much broader range of division. And um, I am generally, as a parent uh, and as a political commentator, I am against them, even though I benefited hugely from them. Right, so it's a no from you? Well, this is an argument about the past. It's about what we destroyed. Uh, I don't think, and I've just finished writing a book on the subject, and I don't think that we could actually restore grammar schools. It's a great pity. I wish we could. Uh, we did a, a, a really stupid thing. In my childhood, it was widely said that a set of English A-levels were worth the equivalent of an American college degree. Nobody would say that now. The level of education in this country, for, particularly for those who actually got into the grammar schools, was extremely high. And we destroyed that. We destroyed it in the grammar schools themselves because once you have a national education system which isn't selective, then you have to drop the standards. And the O levels and A levels and our university degrees have been devalued to the point that they're, they're, they're worthless by comparison with what they were in the middle 60s. So we've, we've hugely damaged the education of this country by destroying them. We are a much less well educated country. That includes the private schools. The private schools can, can waltz through the current examination system and, and they will get good results, whatever they do, without actually having to draw breath. They're not particularly good either. We have not got good education. Look, on the continent of Europe, the German-speaking countries, and you will find that they retained a selective, academically selective schools, and these are the most economically advanced and actually socially contented uh, and successful countries uh, on the continent as a result. The, they do not waste... I've been to one of the new grammar schools which were opened in the former East Germany after communism collapsed in Wismar, and you've got that wonderful thing that the children of dockers and doctors in the same class learning together as they should be because they, they qualify for it. What we have now in this country is vicious, ruthless and brutal selection by parental wealth. Mm. And it's, and it's, it's the, in the, the old system, there were... There were there were ways back. You could you, you could have another go. Uh, there were people who would who would move back into the in, into the in, into grammar schools, having been in secondary ones. If you were discriminated against as you are now on National Offer Day at each March because your parents don't have enough money to live in the right area, that's forever. Unless yeah. they win the lottery, nothing. Yeah, so we, uh, why people now say, "Oh, I'm really really against academic selection. It was so unfair," while tolerating this foul yeah. uh, selection by by parental wealth, which which, which we have at university now. I cannot imagine how somebody who calls himself particularly a socialist can be in favour of a school system which totally privileges wealth and has nothing to say to talent. And that's what we have. That's, that's what the argument is fundamentally about. And we have done a terrible, disastrous piece of national self-harm by getting rid of... The, the existing grammar schools are neither here nor there. They're not, they're not grammar schools by the standards of, of 50 years ago at all. And they're just... They're, they're just pretty good comprehensive schools, besieged, of course, by middle-class parents who don't want to have to pay £200,000 in post-tax income in school fees. But they're not grammar schools. Jack? Well, I, the one point that I do agree with Peter on is that you can't go back. You can't suddenly reinstate grammar schools. Um, and it's time... Who would teach in them for a well, start? Where, you know, you find people where are you going to build them? Who's going to teach in them? How are you going to make sure that the selection 
uh, process is fairer and covers a wider area. So actually it would be time and it really would be quite good if the Conservative Party stopped harking back to sort of black and white television and Dixon of Doc Green and, you know, Pints of Stout and Ina Sharples and grammar schools and recognise that we're now in 2022 and some things you can't replicate and actually concentrate on making education for all kids better and fairer and give all children opportunity How? because, well, certainly, you know, if you're going to keep building houses at the rate they want to, build more schools so that we haven't got these massive but schools. More, more won't be... I, it, 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 this is actually really a matter of attitude. If we had a political party which was genuinely conservative, I wouldn't be so desperate about this. I would think we could do something about it. When East Germany collapsed, a communist country in which they had comprehensive education for most people and highly selective uh, sixth form colleges for, for the Communist Party and its toadies, which is the arrangement they had, the, the people of, of former East Germany went to their local government, so they said, we want our grammar schools back, and they put them back. These, they understood, these are people who understood that egalitarian politics is terribly damaging to education, and they'd seen it in action, they'd lived under it, and they wanted to get rid of it. In this country, people have no idea that comprehensives were not introduced for educational reasons. They were, they were not introduced to make things fairer. They were introduced because of, of, a, of a mad utopian scheme by people who, who knew, particularly the inventor of the term comprehensive, Sir Graham Savage, who knew that standards would fall when they were introduced. And it's been a, a huge social experiment conducted on helpless children, and it's failed. But until, unless and until we develop in this country a, a political formation which is capable of discussing this, which is not the Conservative Party or the Labour Party, then nothing will happen. And I, I, that, that is the problem. I wish it were otherwise. But, the but, the, 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 to, but to say so vaguely, oh, let's have good schools for everybody, you can't have it. Sco good schools will always be selective. The question is how they select. In modern Britain, exactly. they select by money. Yes, and that was going and that's to be what, my That point. is what left, left-wing people defend. Let, let the but, the, but the damage is so apparent in, in areas where we still have selective education, where we still have grammar schools, which is not a criticism of grammar schools, but that point that Peter's making, that it's down to selection by wealth and by proximity or by postcode, literally, is just not yes, the way... Yes, but, Joe, we have 165 grammar schools, a tiny rump concentrated in London commuter areas. What we did have, if we had the equivalent now of what we had before 65, we would have something in the region of 2,000 grammar schools all over the country. Yes, but we're not... And, they, were, and they would be equally open and, and they would be able to select entirely on merit. And there's no comparison to be made between what we have now and what we had then.